This video is made with the sponsorship of Ecrotech New Zealand, one source for all your beekeeping requirements. Trev here from Trev's Bees on Facebook and YouTube. <clears throat> well, we're just about to do um, video number four in our series on uh, extracting honey harvesting from the AFB check to the bee escape to harvesting the honey, and the honey is now here sitting on a, a special little board down there which is one of these this is a, um, a drip tray you buy these from the honey shop as you can see they get covered in propolis around there and I, at the end of the season I scrape all that off and give them a, give them a good scrape clean up so this stops uh, honey ended, ending up uh, all over the place so that'll sit down there. So as we take the honey off here, we'll put it down here after it's been or the, the frames after it's been through my extractor. So this is a six frame radial. So the frames sit in like this. We have uh, on off button, a variable speed controller, so we can make it go faster or slower, and a forward and reverse. I only ever have it going in a forward direction. You can see there's some honey in the bottom of it. Uh, and that's been uh, yesterday's extraction. So that's as clean as I got it. Down here, the honey drips out, uh, comes out through the honey gate into a strainer where the wax, <coughs> the wax is separated and the honey falls in, into the bottom. Which brings us to the next thing. Straining the honey. And when we done our last video on extracting, I had a lot of people uh, contact me asking how I'd done my knots for holding the strainer on the top. So we're going to go through that really, really carefully. And these are the strainers that I use. So the Hayden's paint strainers, but they're perfectly brand new. Haven't had any paint through them, trust me. Uh, 12 pieces in a pack and they're designed to fit a 10 litre, 4 gallon bucket. And they look like this. Right? So they've got a, a seam on the ins on one side, so I always put that seam on the inside. And I put that over the container like that. The only trouble is that the weight of the wax and stuff on here will cause that to squeeze off so what we need to do is we need to tie this on and this is where my magic knot comes in so I've got a piece of string here that's nylon cord uh, plaited braided cord uh, it's two meters long and I've just simply tied an overhand knot in the end and we need to put another knot in it and we need to go around about that distance and we're going to put another overhand knot so fold it in half and just put a knot like that simple nothing flash pulls it tight so now we have the same knot there and there Put that around there, the free end comes through the, the end, just loops through. The free end again goes through and catches the second loop that's in the end. We now have two layers of string. We then come back and we put the third layer in. So now we have one, two, three layers of cord here. And when you pull that up in the direction of that knot, they will all tighten up and they won't come loose. That won't come undone. All right, so now you can see that we've got this cord holding that 
sieve nice and neat. I think we're going to need a couple of buckets today, so that's why I've just done that extra one. So we'll put that down here, under here. This is my rack for um, uncapping, and I'm going to put a pair of gloves on now. The thing I want to talk about today is this honey planer. Uh, I bought this about 12 months ago from uh, Kelly Bees in um, the USA. By the time I got it here to New Zealand, it cost about uh, $300, but um, it was $140 US. Then I had to ship it to New Zealand, which is about $80, so freight out of the USA is horrendous. Uh, and then with the conversion fee from US dollars to New Zealand dollars, it came out at $300. So, very well made piece of equipment, and I'll explain how it all works. So you've got to buy, you've got to order the, in New Zealand, the 230 volt one. Uh, it's got an on-off switch here, and I've just turned it on. So, and this here is the heating element, but there's no real thermostat up here, and you've got to be a little bit mindful and turn this off every now and again. It heats this copper plate up that's here and that copper plate is what takes the cappings off and the cappings roll up into this little catching bucket uh, and then we can tip them out into here so I've got a little infrared thermometer so I can cap check that there and that's currently 32 degrees I need it to be up around 70 so the first thing I'm going to do is put some gloves on and I've got a bucket of cold water over here so I can clean up any mess, dribbles and such like that I make. That's not my clean up water, it's just a bucket of water that I've got here for while I'm extracting. Now the other thing. Because we're past the 1st of January, this is now first week of March, all honey in, extracted in New Zealand uh, above a certain uh, point, uh, above Nelson, has to go away for tootin testing. We have a plant here in New Zealand, a uh, tutu plant, and all parts of that plant are toxic. The scully popper gets on there, uh, sucks, sucks the sap out of the toot and mush, which they then excrete uh, out their bum, so it's uh, insect poo. The bees come, bees and wasps come along, they harvest that, and that makes a toxic honey. It's not toxic to the bees uh, or the scully popper, but it is toxic to us. Uh, when it's in the... Uh, Blended in amongst the rest of the honey, it's okay, but we need to know what the safe levels are. I've been testing my honey here in Palmerston North for quite a few years. I don't really need to test it now because I've never had a positive test. Um, it's always come in below the level. However, I still always get that done. Okay, so we check that now, and that's now just under 70 degrees, so it's about spot on. Um, grab a hive tool and I uh, loosen up the frames so some people use the uncapper this way but I find it's not so good but if I go this way I can get it nice and clean and the caps just roll off beautifully and I have my little uncapping scratcher here and if necessary I just go and remove those little caps anything that I might have missed I always like to have the top bar to me 
So I flip it over. Look at that, beautiful. So even when the frames aren't perfectly flat, it doesn't worry the capping scratcher at all. It just cuts down and if you've got a little bit that you missed, well you can just hook the corner in and dig those out. It doesn't really matter. All this capping that is here will get strained off afterwards to make sure we get rid of all the honey out of it. And then of course all that wax will get sorted out. So sometimes there's a little bit of wax that gets caught up in here and I just have to clean that off. That's not a problem. Alright, if you don't happen to have one of those there's lots of ways you can do it. You can just scrape the frames or like I used to do get in there and uncap it all but as you can see that takes a fair bit of time so that's enough of that. I'm already, I'm already bored with that. Even though you think you're going relatively slow with this, it is quite quick when you compare it to that uncapping fork. Alright, that's frame number six. So I've just turned the uncapper off, the capping plane off. Throw that in there. Give my hands a bit of a wipe before I switch it on. Turn the switch on. Turn the speed up. So that's now going at full speed and I now put my timer on and I'm now going to run this for 15 minutes. And in the meantime, I'll get the next six frames ready. So what I've done now is I've taken that top box off and I've put it on another tray, drip tray down here. And as I uncap, I'll now put those down here so I've got somewhere where all the drippings will go one after the other and about now we can open the honey gate and we let the honey start to run out don't ever leave the shed 
while the honey gate's open. Honey makes a heck of a mess. So now 13 minutes has gone by since we switched that on. That's now those six frames are now pretty well empty. I've now uncapped another seven frames down here. So we're going to turn that off and the way I do that, safety reasons. I turn the speed controller all the way down and then I turn it off. Um, that speed control will actually take it down to zero. At that stage, the frames come out, they're pretty clean, however they're still covered in honey. So what we're going to do later is we're going to put these back on the hive as we call wets and uh, the bees will clean these up. So I'm just going to take the first couple of frames out of here and then I'll start putting some of these frames back in. I just changed a couple of frames over, hopefully to try and keep this balanced. One of the worst things with the, the honey is every frame is a different size, and somehow you've got to try and balance them up so that they are all rotating at the same speed, or at the same weight level so that it, uh, the extractor doesn't start walking around the place. So I turn it on. Nothing's moving, so now I can start dialing. The last thing you want is this thing to try and fire up into full speed right from the, the get-go. If it's out of balance, we've got some danger problems. But currently we're up about three quarters and there is no movement, so I can take this up to 100%. Then I turn it off, I clear what we've got, set the timer going again, and we start again. Alright, remember I said before, keep an eye on the honey gate. Um, we've still got a little bit of headroom there, but there's still a lot of space left in the bucket. We've only got about half a bucket of honey, so what we're going to do is we're going to close that honey gate. We'll grab that bucket that we just done earlier on. And put another one going. And then we'll just rotate those ones backwards and forwards to let that lot drain out. And keep stepping them through. 